It's finally here. Everything we know about Forsaken Part 2, and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here, and welcome to Guardian Watcher. So, we are finally here with part two of the everything we know so far about the Forsaken DLC. If you haven't seen part one, then you definitely want to watch that, or you may be lost in some of the information in this video. Part one will be in the description as well as at the end of this video, just in case you guys would like to see that. All sources will be in the description as well. This series will have many more parts prior to the Forsaken DLC being released, uh, because I am kind of playing catch up, so if I miss something, freight not, because it will be in the next video. Hopefully. Spoiler alert! You have three seconds to leave this video if you do not want any Forsaken spoilers. You have been warned. That was more like five seconds, but hey, I gave you extra time. <laughs> Now, I do want to start by apologizing for my last video because when I started this script versus when the video was actually released, there was a few things that were already confirmed by Bungie, as well as some time in between. So, with that said, if you haven't heard, Cage 6 dies. Yes, dies in the Forsaken. This was confirmed by Bungie like a month ago. However, also confirmed by Bungie is that Nathan Fillion will no longer be the voice actor of K6, and instead, Nolan North, which is the voice actor of our current ghost, will be doing all of K's lines in The Forsaken. Now, I kinda don't know how I feel about that, but um, Nathan has been the voice of K since Bungie actually allowed the NPCs to have a voice. I'm just not sure that Nolan North can tell jokes like Nathan could, but it is also said that K doesn't really have a lot of lines in Forsaken anyways, so... I guess it kind of pans out. Now, the Forsaken campaign is a very different one from the ones that we have seen before. This campaign is a little more personal and is about revenge. Revenge for the death of Cade 6 against Prince Aldrin, who is the Queen's brother, and the Barons who helped him kill Cade. A few interesting things that I have read in last month's Game Informer magazine was, quote, presumed dead by many, we see a face that has been absent in the story since the beginning of the Taken King. The sullen awoken Prince Aldrin has been imprisoned deep within the prison of elders, end quote. And according to the Destiny lore, quote, After the Battle of Saturn, Prince Aldrin's ship crash-landed on Hela's base in Mars. Sound kind of familiar? His last known report indicated that he allowed himself to be captured in order to find the Kel of Kings to raise an army via some unclear means, end quote. Now, there's been a lot of missing parts to the story, like... How did Prince Aldrin even end up at the Prison of Elders? Because the Kel of Kings has no relation with the House of Judgment who ran the prison. So it'll be very interesting to hear the backstory on that. Oh, and if you didn't know, you can currently find Prince Aldrin's ship on Hellas Base in Mars within the Ma'adim Subterrain Lost Sector in the Glacial Drifts. In the Tangled Shore, which is one of the areas that we will have to go through in order to do the Forsaken story, we will have to hunt down Prince Aldrin and eight Barons. Once again, Barons are the bosses of the Scorn, who are all fallen by race. Now, that little tidbit will be very important in a few minutes. We hunt Barons through new adventures in Forsaken. There are five male and three female Barons. The female Barons are the Mechanist, the Trickster, and the Rider. Now, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce their names because it's just ridiculous. <laughs> the male barons are the Fanatic, the Mindbender, the Hangman, the Mad Bomber, and the Rifleman. And once again, I'm not gonna try to pronounce their names either. So let's give you a little background on them. The Fanatic is the leader of the barons and the dark, corrupted evolution of the Elixni known as the Scorn. Second only to Prince Aldrin Solve, he views his Scorn as an evolution of Fallen and the final manifest of what they were always meant to be, eternal. The Mindbender is a mad genius who has been changed by his research into the Hive and their dark religion has somehow found a means of exercising control over Hive combatants. So the Mindbender is fallen but he looks like Hive. The Hangman is a silent sadist known for his penchant for docking and tearing ether generators from the cores of servitors with his bare hands. His obsession with torturing servitors is unprecedented in the history of the Elixni. 
The Mad Bomber is a bombastic thrill-seeker for whom self-preservation is an afterthought. The lunatic known as the Mad Bomber is willing to blow an entire location to smithereens just to kill his target. The Rifleman is an all-seeing sniper who watches his brother Baron's back. The Rifleman keeps his targets at a distance, plays real dirty, and never misses a shot. Brilliant, cold, and patient, more than one of the Rifleman's notches is a Guardian's ghost. Which means, most likely, that the Rifleman is the one who took out K6's ghost, which is why he couldn't be revived. The Machinist is second in command to the Fanatic and his most ardent follower. Expert in munitions, weapon crafting, and in charge of the siege on the... and that actual location was redacted. She's an insatiable thief and hoarder with a terrifying arsenal. The Trickster is a silver tongue manipulator and con artist with a high opinion of herself. The Trickster has a penchant for deadly sleight of hand and prefers to work behind the scenes when it comes to the Baron's operations. She does all she can to stay out of sight and is known for duping others into doing her dirty work. The Rider is an anarchist biker and leader of her own gang of pike riders. The Rider raises fields and pollutes the air everywhere she and her gang run. She's a master mechanic who's taken the fallen heavy pike and made it better. Much, much better. Now, in the Forsaken, flashpoints will work a little differently from their current state. We will now be able to jump into public events, lost sectors, and heroic adventures in order to complete the flashpoint. Personally, I don't see an issue with the way that the new Flashpoint milestones are actually going to work. It actually gives you something more to do than just doing the heroic public events. After the campaign is over, there will be many more outlaws who also escape the Prison of Elders for us to hunt down. They will be located on every destination in Destiny 2 and are in almost every activity. They can appear in public events as a high value target or HVT. Many bosses and strikes during gambit matches in Lost Sectors, which replaces the current boss already in the Lost Sector. When the Forsaken DLC is released, you can view the new Triumphs and Collections tabs on our character UI to track down all of the outlaws, but one of the new NPCs, the Spider, will also give us reasons to hunt them down. The Spider is a fallen leader who has allied with the Last City and has personal reasons for hunting down the outlaws. The spider will give us bounties that will offer a hint to the outlaws location similar to how the House of Wolves worked in Destiny 1. There will be four tiers of bounties which each are specific to varying power levels. The first three will have you travel to different destinations with various tasks but the fourth tier brings us to a new activity called the Outlaw Lost Sector. These Lost Sectors are a much more difficult version of the current Lost Sector with a brand new boss encounter with an outlaw per destination excluding the Tangle Shore and Dreaming City. And within all the locations, there are six new boss encounters. Speaking of the Tangle Shore, it will have three Lost Sectors of its own. One of the Lost Sectors is called Wolf's Dock and another is called The Pit. Now, not all of the bosses in the outlaw Lost Sectors are fallen. One of the bosses, however, one of the bosses from the Outlaw Sector is the Silent Fang. In Destiny 1, the Silent Fang was a group of fallen assassins that used stealth tech. The Silent Fang worked for Skolas and was led by Drevis, Wolf Baroness, and had a mission to hunt them down on Earth. Now, I'm assuming that group, the Silent Fang from Destiny 1, was named after the actual Silent Fang. And the Silent Fang will be the Outlaw Lost Sector boss for the EDZ which only makes sense. While inside the Lost Sectors, there will be bombs that drop from Exploder Shanks that we will have to throw at barriers to progress and machines that will drop Silent Fang shields allow you to deal damage. Gravetide Summoner is the outlaw Lost Sector boss for Titan. Gravetide Summoner is a high wizard that summons a very powerful ogre that must be defeated before you can fight the boss. Also, Bungie will be raising the difficulty on all Lost Sectors when the Forsaken is released. Lost Sectors will no longer be an entry level activity and they are also changing the loot system for Lost Sectors but more will be on that later. In part 1 I mentioned what all of the new supers were but I didn't really mention what the subclass paths were called. Go ahead and check out part 1 if you want more information about the new supers. As for the subclass paths names for the Hunters, we are going to start with the Arc Strider and it is called Way of the Current. 
The Gunslinger is called Way of the Thousand Cuts, and for Night Stalkers, it's called Way of the Wrath. Next is Titans. The Sentinel subclass path is called Code of the Commander, Strikers is called Code of the Missile, and Sunbreaker is called Code of the Devastator. And last but not least is Warlocks. Dawnblade. Their subclass path is called Attunement of Grace, Stormcallers is Attunement of Control, and Voidwalker is Attunement of Fission. And a link to what these supers look like will be in the description below. Now, let's talk about public events in the Dreaming City. Like all public events, there is a normal version and a heroic version. One of the public events in the Dreaming City is called the Rift Generator which has you powering up a generator and then defending it from enemies in order to prevent it from shutting down. As the core integrity percentage is reduced, we'll have to grab orbs that are dropped from powerful enemies and bring them back to the generator to charge it back up. It's a very fast public event, but the heroic version takes players to the Ascendant Realm. Yeah, that same place that we couldn't get into the first time in the Taken King? During this public event, you will be fighting the Scorn as well as the Taken. This is the first time we ever had to face two different enemies in one public event, and this public event lasts for about five minutes. On the Tangle Shore, one of the public events is called Locate the Cryopod, where we have to search for a fugitive that has escaped the cryopod. And that's pretty much all the information we know so far about that public event. So, when I talked about the bow in part one, I said the different types of bows we'd get, whether low, medium, or long range. One of the exotic bows is called Trinity Ghoul. Its intrinsic perk is when you hit a precision shot, the next arrow is filled with arc energy that unleashes an AoE upon impact with an object. So it doesn't actually have to hit an enemy. This bow also shoots three shots while other bows only shoot one. And this does not include reserve ammo. And I will get more into the weapons when it comes to part three or part four of the other videos. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Blind Well. The Blind Well is a specific area in the Dreaming City which is similar to the Court of Oryx but is not supposed to replace Escalation Protocol. It is a repeatable encounter that you fight waves in waves of enemy but with a twist. You have to stay inside these bubbles that enemies come into and kill you but with each wave their bubble shrinks and you need to move toward another bubble. The resources we get from these encounters we will need to use in order to defeat the boss. There are different tiers for the blind well depending on the different tokens that we find in the Dreaming City. One of the bosses in the blind well will throw out a lot of totems and we will have to destroy them very quickly. Some of these totems will have abilities like slowing your character down. Last but not least I have a few quick notes to give you guys. As you know we will soon have access to Gambit for about 24 hours. However, if you are killed in Gambit while you're on the opponent's side, you will drop three motes that your opponent can then put inside their bank. Now, I know that's a very small bit of information, but it can help. There will be one new strike that towards the end is a blast from the past and we will have an encounter inside of the Prison of Elders just like it was set up in the original Destiny. There will be two other new Crucible modes coming to the Forsaken that is not Gambit and they are Breakthrough and Scorched. The new mod system will not offer a power boost, so that kind of sucks a little bit. You will need to own Curse of Osiris and Warmind in order to play Forsaken. We can expect about 10 to 15 new exotic weapons and armor coming to the DLC. There will be badges for collecting stats. Strikes have been added to the destination map, so we will be able to choose out of three different strikes that we want. Other than what is currently in place, there will no longer be any more content for the Leviathan in year 2. However, there will be more raid layers after the new raid comes with Forsaken. My guess is that there will be a new raid layer that will come with each content release that is in the annual pass. And for a little bit of humor, the Destiny 2 Forsaken initials are D2F. <laughs> And that, my friends, brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these videos as well. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more, because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.